Hey, 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 everyone. What's up? What's going on? Welcome to the Expat Brad Podcast. It's Salman Qureshi, and I'm recording this from outside my house. Like, I'm on, I'm out and about, and uh, I need to get this episode in. So here we are. If this sounds a bit crappy, I apologize in advance. Uh, but persevere through the episode because it's such an exciting one. Because we're talking about love and Valentine's and how it's the best thing that's ever happened to men <laughs> and women. And oh shit, I can't, I can't keep going on with this, guys. Before you, we even like get into the Valentine stuff. I gotta, I gotta tell you this, right? So my wife, she does a lot of events. She gets called into these branding exercises and whatnot, and she does beautiful live uh, illustrations. And, and she told me, and. and Day before she she's going out and I'm like, what's this event about, right? And she says it's a Galentine event, and I didn't know what it was. Uh, Galentine's the first time I've heard it. I didn't know this thing existed. It's been around for a while apparently, but Galentine is when all the single girls who want to have dates on Valentine's Day they go out uh, a couple of days or well, I think it's supposed to be on the 13th. But so they go out and they get, you know, whatever they party, they get drunk or whatever they do so that on the 14th, they're not super upset. Right. And I <laughs> and the one she was going to was like two days before. But I was like, it doesn't solve the problem because you wake up on the 14th and you're still single and you'll still be upset. Like, what are you trying to <laughs> do? I just think it's one of the most self-absorbed horrific things you can do to, like it's just one of those why it's the whiniest thing you can do there's a holiday and it's about love it's about expressing love and um and finding love and rekindling love or whatever the you know <laughs> the whole holiday is about love and you got you, you got to make it about yourself you can't let people in love just be happy just just go you know what good for them they've got some love no no everybody all the time now has to make everything about them and their situation and how it's not fair and these these galentine people oh they just basically they're just like hey i'm single so i'm just gonna make this you know try to steal the focus about this and i just wanted to be about me and I just want to remind everyone I couldn't find love. You know the reason you might be celebrating Galentine's? There might be good, valid reasons. But I, I have a strong feeling if you're the type that's been doing Galentine for a while, that might be the reason because you're whiny. <laughs> I know this sounds mean. Maybe it is. But I think it's mean of those people to celebrate, not just, just get in on it, man. There are holidays that I don't like. There are holidays that I'm like, oh my God, I have to spend loads of money on gifts and stuff, right? And some of it is BS. But I don't sit there. It just, it's like you've started Galentine. You're the, what is it? The Scrooge. Is it the Scrooge? The, what's it called? The Christmas person. The, the, the people who don't like celebrating Christmas and are like all the help. And you get what I'm saying, right? Like, I think it's okay if you don't like a holiday, but you don't have to reverse it and make it about you. All right. So this Galentine thing, as far as I'm concerned, the first time I heard it, man, please, please don't do that to yourself. Please don't celebrate stuff like that. Um, at most, it's probably like some campaign by some brand and go, hey, how do we get all these single women to buy our product? Let's, let's, let's make them feel important. What's the day they feel the least important? And we'll make it about <laughs> So now they're making sales on Galentine's and Valentine's. I think it's genius. Whoever came up with it from a economic point of view, you're a genius, man. And um, and I don't say, man, it, it might be another woman. Who, who cares? It's just brilliant from that perspective. For those who are being sucked into it, save yourselves. Get out of that party. If someone invited you next year again, just just don't do it. Just remember, I hope you remember this podcast and just don't do that stuff, okay? Because Valentine's, it gets a lot of flack, uh, flack about it. Um, I, You know, growing up in Saudi, it wasn't, uh, again, you know, back in the day, like, <laughs> they did crazy stuff. Initially, when I started hearing about Valentine's as a kid, 
uh, I remember, you know, it was such a cute thing in my head. I, I got flowers for like my first girlfriend. I got flowers for my mom just because I was like, you know, this is cute. I want her to get flowers. And um, and then a year or two after that, I think the, the religious police kind of woke up to it and went, whoa, 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 whoa. What's this Western influence happening out here? And so they banned Valentine's. And and that meant what they did was that red, you know, just the color red was kind of like banned around Valentine's. You weren't allowed. They'd be vigilant about watching you trying to sell some stuff that could be perceived as Valentinish. <laughs> it's it's amazing, isn't it? And so red balloons, red cards, anything that said Valentine's, they confiscated. They they stop you from doing it. And anyway, you technically, you know, it was illegal for unmarried people to be out on dates. So that was always a thing. But then on top of it, even if you were married, you know, it, it didn't allow you to celebrate Valentine's Day. All right. So it, it went. Uh, and then a couple of years ago, they, they announced like they've been celebrating it. And it's such again, you know, such a remarkable change of attitude towards something that really isn't a big deal to do. Right. So. Uh, it's amazing to see that. And yet, in other places, I see the same crap happening. The funniest thing, after the Galentine's thing that I heard, I love Valentine's because it gives you so much of these wonderful, hateful stories. It's amazing. I, In India, you, if you haven't heard this, man, you, you got you to gotta read up on it. In India, the, because of this you know, extreme right-wing parties in power, uh, and they've been like all extreme like nationalism and India and everything about the West is wrong and blah, blah, blah. And so they they wanted to they, they've been over the last few years. What they've been doing is like they'll attack people celebrating Valentine's. It's kind of, kind of horrific sometimes as well. Uh, if you're on a date uh, in a park or something, I think they forced some of them to get married on the spot there. And, so, you know, just crazy st- stunts like that. But this year they thought we'll we'll, we'll encourage people to celebrate valentine's by hugging a cow instead oh my god that's gold like sometimes when i think about writing comedy i am not brilliant enough to come up with stuff like that like this is stuff i would have thought would come up in parody films or something but no they went for it and they were trying to really push it and go hug a cow (laughs) hug a cow and then they had to stop it because there's such a funny backlash that basically the internet exploded with memes and whatnot about it uh <laughs> some of the funniest stuff i saw was you know about getting consent from the cow and whatnot and, and rightfully so uh and and that just made them scurry away and and kind of played it cold about it but you know when whenever you hear these things when this happens i can't help but imagine like the meeting at which this was confirmed. Like they went, there must have been a bunch of these people sitting around and they went, how do we stop Valentine's from happening? And someone, who was that person? I want to know. I want to dig deep and discover that person because I personally, I want to shake their hand. I want to know if they're secretly a comedy writer that has infiltrated the right-wing party (laughs) and just shake their hand, man, for that because they sat there and they, they kept a straight face and they went, you know what? Instead of uh, instead of people dating and doing that kind of stuff, let's get them to hug cows. And 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 they kept a straight face while they said it, while they suggested that. And and the whole room erupted into yes, yes, yes. That is a brilliant idea. It's um, it's what we need to do. It's going to stop people from going down the path of. Western uh, values destruction in our society and and they went with it and they all went this is I don't know if anyone in that room went hey hey guys is it a little strange you know just just a little strange that we're um we're asking people to hug, go go out and hug a cow on Valentine's so you're kind of celebrating Valentine's anyway because it is about love except now we're forcing them to show it to the cow and we're getting people to like hug cows. I don't know. I don't know. I don't feel comfortable about this, right? You would hope someone would say it, but maybe it's a case of 
the emperor's emperor's <laughs> emperor. My throat is so bad. I'm trying to get words out. The emperor's uh, clothes situation where everyone's like deep down. They're like, man, this sounds crazy. But outside they're like, I'm going to prove to these people I'm more right wing than the other person. And so they all like double down on it and went, yeah, yeah, that's the greatest idea. And not only that, let's like put flowers on the cow while we're doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And while we're doing it, let's let's add a kiss. Maybe too much. Maybe too much. <laughs> I, what point did they say? Yeah, and then you can take it home and make love. And then they all look at that guy who suggested that and go, dude, dude, no, no, no. It's about showing respect to the cow, all right? Like, it's sacred here. What the hell are you doing? And so on and so forth. So it's, um, yeah, I would have been, I would just love to be a, a fly in the corner or a cow sitting there going, uh, you guys might want to consult us before you um, before you go ahead with this because uh, we have an opinion about this too. <laughs> what is it, Cal? What's your opinion? Well, to be honest, you know, uh, if you would just like, you know, just let me get out of this room because my brain's like falling out listening to you guys, and maybe just keep the your distance. I'm uh, I'm not comfortable with PDA, and let me be. All right. And they're like, no, but this will you like it. You like. It. <laughs> Oh, God. There's always something, right? I think I saw somewhere. I didn't get a chance to verify it or, like, look up the actual link. But someone posted about the Supreme Court of Pakistan saying uh, Valentine shouldn't be celebrated or should be banned or is banned. I don't know if it's old news or it was this year around, but I saw something floating. I, uh, it just came to my mind because I was laughing about these things. And, and you would think in a country where you have cases piling up and it takes years decades sometimes to get justice you think the judges wouldn't be the supreme court wouldn't be wasting time going hey let's talk about valentine's day right another bunch of old idiots who are just sitting around going yeah yeah let's interfere with how people want to express love and blah 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 and so they got in on it too man if it's true if it's true if it's wrong tell me about it because i'm uh i i really am not sure about what's going on with that um i just you know i just am happy on this day because it just reminds me of um of having someone that really loves me and it's nice man and i know i feel bad if you don't have that kind of feeling uh if you've never had it man you got you, you got to try harder right i think uh and by harder i don't mean like in a creepy way like don't <laughs> I'm not encouraging you to walk up to more uh, members of the opposite sex, like in a creepy tone and whatnot. Just just mingle more with people. I, I'm sure you'll find someone. Yeah, you'll find someone. And just don't like don't overthink it about like um, you do want someone who kind of matches your values somewhat. But I also think by meeting people, dating and really getting to know people more you kind of hone in on like, oh, this is not what I want. And by process of elimination, which, you know, some people say you got to kiss a lot of frogs, you really do get to the point where you're like, this is what I'm really looking for. This is what it really means. And it's not the superficial stuff, guys. It's some um, uh, deep meaning, awesome stuff out there. And, and when you discover that, you will find that perfect partner and you'll be happy. All right. Uh, Obviously, every relationship has ups and downs. So when I say happy, 90% of the time, you'll be happy, all right? Um, and it's just nice to remember that, that you have all this love in your life. And 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 so I tell you, man, don't give up. Don't be the person, like, who's falling back to, like, getting drunk on this day or just being miserable or just having to celebrate Galentines with other people. Just go out and, uh, go out and, and meet people and you'll find... Your true love. Oh, true love sounds so, ugh, like Hollywood. Um, you'll find a partner who is a great complement to your life. And you'll get an opportunity to see what it feels like to be unselfish and do things for someone else. And to feel the same back for you. It's a great learning thing. It's, it's, it's awesome. It, it helps you grow as a human being. 
I think. I think. Then you have a kid together, and oh my God, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> and then you try to fix it by going, let's have one more. You know, the situation, what we need to do is let's, let's add a, another kid to it. Um, <laughs> oh dear. I've got this chesty cough that's not going away. I think it's the weather, it's this allergy and stuff. And, and, and it's already getting hot in Dubai. Um, I don't remember Valentine's being this hot in the last few years. And uh, and that's sad, man. I, I think I start getting a little depressed. Like my depression is uh, linked to the rise in temperature, <laughs> correlated. You know, so as the temperatures start rising, my depression starts rising. And um, and it's, it's, it's ugh, it's ugh. And I, I, I wish... I hope there's like another cold wave for a couple of weeks or something that passes through Dubai because it's it's still too early to be this hot, right? Um, enjoy the winter. It's still cool at night and stuff, so do that. Um, what else? What else is going on, man? I I finally uh, I I really I'm just annoyed at like um, I know I've said this before, but these Netflix guys and stuff like why are you guys releasing stuff? like half broken up. I don't know what that's supposed to achieve, man. Like I just started watching you and then I realized it's four episodes in. I got to wait. Or these weekly episode drops. Ah, I know I keep complaining about it and now I've just given up and I'm just going to wait till all the episodes are, are out and then I'll watch it at one go or at least like four or five episodes in so that I don't know. I don't know, man. I just somebody talked to these guys. As it is, everyone's stressed out about the password sharing thing like um there's some big conversations going on around in families right now yeah like um how are we going to sort this out guys <laughs> like it's going to tear families apart and go well salman was useful for us because you know he had a netflix account and now we got to pay for our own so do we really do we really need him in our life in our lives and um and that that's a little sad i'm uh i'm upset about that kind of situation arising and my family realizing why they hang out with me. Um, I hope Netflix doesn't do it because it's also just, uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm the kind of person that'll be like, you know what? Like, just leave it logged on your TV. I don't need it. (laughs) I'll just end up letting other people use it. I also feel like Netflix is being hacked a lot more because it's been twice in the last three, two, two months. Uh, so once a month, I guess in the last two, three months that I've had that email from Netflix going, Hey, someone in uh obscure country or outside of the UAE has logged into your account. I always go, some, one of my family members traveling to this place. I'm like, definitely not. Um, and so, yeah, you're like, Oh shit. Someone's possibly hacked in. Gotta, gotta change my password. Uh, because it's, uh, I'm just afraid of Netflix now. I'm afraid what they'll do if they find out I didn't do anything about uh, letting someone use my account. And also, if someone's hacked it, I'm worried that, you know, on my profile, they'll watch stuff and it'll ruin my algorithm and then I'll get suggestions that are shitty. <laughs> that's that's my real concern, okay? That's that's the thing I'm most worried about. So, um so unfortunately, you know, the people who did hack in, I hope you got a couple of episodes in, got to watch it for a day or so, but I just, I had to, man, I had to like reset it. I apologize. If you happen to be listening to this podcast, then I apologize, man. I, if it was up to me, I'd let you watch it. I'd let you create another profile on my account, but they're at full uh, capacity at this point right now as well. So I, I just can't help you out. You got to find other people to hack. All right. Find, look up, look up the people in the Galantine crowd. Okay, <laughs> I guarantee. I have this feeling, strong feeling, that they might not have too many people sharing in on their Netflix password. Just putting it out there. I know this might hurt some people a little bit that I put it out like that, but I think that's what's happening. And they are likely to have Netflix accounts because you know. Well, when they get home, they got to be doing something. <laughs> I, I sound so mean. I, I had someone tell me, Salman, you're so fun all the time. 
And then I listen to your podcast and there's like this little mean streak in there. And uh, maybe it's like my little out, you know, just just to just to listen, just to like kind of have this other vibe going on uh, and, and see how that feels for me. Right. So this is part therapy, part me addressing uh, an, an innate human desire to be, you know, just mean sometimes it keeps me cool. It's why I'm fun otherwise. Yeah. Um, we've been doing this uh, Valentine's show at the Courtyard Playhouse where I do a lot of improv comedy theater. And um, and it's always been one of my favorites. We were there last time. I'm doing it tonight as well. Uh, Valentine's show. We do it like over three nights. Um, if you're in Dubai, you happen to listen to podcasts in time, come, come down, watch it. But if you didn't, uh, keep an eye out for it next year as well because... It's uh, it's one of my favorite shows because the format is about using the audience, but not in like a stand-up comedy way. It's really tapping into their stories to find some truth and find some loving moments and recreate some of it or look at it from fresh perspectives. And, and I know it really hits home with people because uh, over the years, the, the that's the one show that so many people I run into go, hey, I was at that Valentine show and it's still and they a lot of them have come back for other shows obviously but they they remember the valentine really strongly they go i was there that night and it was beautiful and i i they remember the work we did the scenes we created we improvised and that's something cuz after 10 years of this man i i can't i don't remember what i did last night in some scene and for people to remember that uh it it's nice it feels um, like we, we took time to create something that was important and, you know, art's got to be fun, but it's nice if art can have that kind of impact too. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I don't know why I brought that up. I think just again, you know, going with the Valentine theme, I think it's nice to, it's such a nice opportunity to reflect on it. So if you're a hater, you know, I, I mean, there are parts of it that I hate, but if you're, just a hater for the sake of hating, um, don't. <laughs> if you've listened to the podcast, then you should, you know, I hope I've changed your mind somewhat about it. <laughs> this has been uh, fun. I I, I kind of just wanted to talk about Valentine in general, just because it's what's happening in my life right now and um, discover a few things about it. But I guess it's just turned into a preachy thing where I'm just like, if you're not celebrating Valentine's, there's something wrong with you, okay? And uh, who knows next year <laughs> how things are. And I'm like, I hate Valentine's. I went for a Galentine's night and it was awesome. So who knows? You don't need to listen to me. Who am I to tell you what to do? All right. Um, you guys have been fantastic. Like I said, I'm out and about, so I, I, I really need to wind this up and, and, and get out. Um Enjoy yourselves. Uh, I hope you had a beautiful Valentine's Day. And I, if not, I hope you have many beautiful Valentine's Day in the coming years, okay? Uh, thank you for listening. Share the episode. Uh, give it a shout. Uh, leave a comment, especially on Apple Podcasts. It helps. Uh, take care. Uh, goodbye. And as a dog would say, woof. <laughs>